It's Tipsy Tuesday time once again. Friends, iatrogenic damage. Such a cute term, right? Janbuchke nahi ki I did not do it on purpose and yet I caused damage to the patient. It is so very frustrating. And one such iatrogenic damage that is very, very common is hurting the adjacent tooth whilst you are doing a crown prep yourself. Not uncommon, especially with posterior teeth, that the adjacent tooth proximal contact gets troubled by the burr on your air rotor when you are prepping for the adjacent tooth. Unfortunately, in such a situation, your technician will have to create an over contoured restoration so as to create some form of proximal contact. This is not how natural anatomy dictates. This is prone to food lodgement, caries and bigger issues to follow. So what is this Tipsy Tuesday all about? In this episode friends, I will talk to you on how to avoid iatrogenic damage to the adjacent teeth whilst you are doing your crown preparation. I'm going to give you two different recommendations. The first one involves preserving a wing of enamel and the second involves the use of a wedge matrix. Let's look at the first example. When preparing the contact area of a tooth, it helps to run your air rotor such that you leave behind a thin ring, lip or wing of enamel. This will ensure that your adjacent tooth does not get traumatized whilst you are preparing the proximal surface of your tooth. Now, one of the common complaints that clinicians face when they are working on this area is they will start at a specific level. Whilst they go from the buccal to the lingual, they tend to go subgingival and then there is bleeding from the proximal tissues. To prevent this friends, I have taken the next step and designed something called as the MI 0.5. This is a modified interdental burr. It's a thin taper burr. Look here. It has a non-cutting tip, which means there are no diamonds at the tip. Now, what's the advantage of doing something like this? If I start at the buckle at a specific level and I go through the contact, I will not be able to go any lower because there is no diamond at the tip. This protects the pulp, the papilla, not the pulp, but the papilla, making sure that there is no inflammation, no food lodgement later. No bleeding, you avoided a potential problem. Once you do this on both sides, you basically take your probe and break that lip of enamel away. Remember, enamel is crystalline, it's brittle, so it snaps off, leaving you a clean margin without hurting the adjacent tooth. So that, friends, is the first recommendation. And second one involves the use of a wedge matrix. Now, look here. This is a tooth preparation for a tabletop restoration. It's basically for a crown lay and in these scenarios we do not actually open the proximal contacts and yet we need to do occlusal reduction. So bajwale daat ko protect kaise karu? And the answer here is in my practice I use fender wedge which is from Directa Dental which is a wedge with a small matrix metallic strip extension. It not only separates the two teeth for me but it also protects the adjacent tooth as I work my air rotor over this region to create a nice flat base for my tabletop restoration. Very similar to this, from Paludent you get a wedge guard that you can use even for your class 2 cavity preparations where you want to protect the adjacent tooth. Sorry, what were you saying? Only for posteriors? Nah. You also have options for anterior teeth. This is where the fender wedge prep, which is again from Director Dental that has an extended plate that can be used for your anterior teeth as well. Remember, it's always important to be safe than sorry. Prevention is more important than cure. And friends, this 
is my tipsy Tuesday for today on how to prevent iatrogenic damage to the adjacent tooth. And that is my tipsy Tuesday for today on preventing damage to the adjacent tooth. Achha laga? To please go ahead and like, share your comments and of course share this with your friends so that we can make dentistry more enjoyable, more profitable for us and for our patients every Tuesday at a time.